October 1997. Thrust SSC attempts to set a new land speed record at Black Rock Desert in Nevada. The British built machine becomes the first car to officially break the sound barrier, averaging 763 miles per hour over two flying miles and setting a world record which still stands to this day. Back in Britain, a project is currently underway that aims to smash that record. The Bloodhound supersonic car is a jet and rocket-powered vehicle which has been designed to break the 1,000 miles per hour barrier. It's an extreme technological challenge. At 1,000 miles per hour, Bloodhound will cover one mile every three and a half seconds. That's faster than a bullet from a gun. And to reach that speed, it needs 135,000 horsepower, eight times that of all the Formula One cars on the starting grid put together. Based in Bristol, the Bloodhound project was launched in 2008 as a global education initiative to spur interest in science and technology. We visited Bloodhound's headquarters and discussed the challenges that lay ahead with Chief Engineer Mark Chapman. Why it's a great project to be working on is there is no right answer, there isn't a book. You can't look across and see how McLaren or Red Bull or Boeing or Airbus are doing things. We are completely unique and the problems that we keep finding are unique to the car and unique to the, e the effort that we're trying to put into it. The design team consists of some of the world's most revered engineering talent many of whom worked on the Thrust SSC project back in 1997. All have been hand-picked to ensure the project achieves its goals. Bloodhound's driver will be Andy Green, the man who set the existing land speed record. An officer in Britain's Royal Air Force, Green is also a mathematics graduate and a former jet fighter pilot. Thank you. 
I have been trained by the best training system in the world. I've had the best day job in the world flying jet fighters and that experience is absolutely invaluable in trying to do something like this. And of course, working for Richard Noble and the Thrust Supersonic car team, we set the world land speed record 17 years ago. I drove that car, I'm now going to get to drive this one. So as a mathematician, as a fighter pilot, and having driven a land speed record car beforehand, I'm uniquely lucky and very excited because the science and technology and the quality of the engineering in this car is unlike anything has ever been. There is no reserve driver for the record attempt as Green is the only person qualified for the role. He's also played a key part in the design and development of Bloodhound. The car will slide all over the desert at high speed, three, four hundred miles an hour. I'll be wrestling the steering to keep it straight. And at 900 miles an hour, tiny steering corrections because the wheels are generating shockwave effects. Handling will change dramatically. It's going to be hot, noisy, lots of G, lots of acceleration. It's going to keep me busy, but it's going to be, for all of us, the most exciting piece of engineering and the biggest engineering adventure with a global audience in history. In order to break the land speed record, the team is employing an eclectic mix of power sources. Firstly, a jet engine that's normally found in a Eurofighter Typhoon aircraft will take the vehicle up to 350 miles per hour. Then a hybrid rocket kicks in, accelerating Bloodhound from 350 to 1,000 miles per hour in just 20 seconds. The third source of power is a supercharged Jaguar V8 car engine, which is used merely as a fuel pump for the rocket. Three. One. Bloodhound's hybrid rocket has been developed in conjunction with the European Space Agency and will also be used to power the next generation of spacecraft. In October 2014, a test firing of the rocket took place at the manufacturer's base in Norway. Its success represented a key milestone for the project as a whole. Bloodhound is part Formula One racing car, part supersonic jet fighter, and part next generation space rocket. The vehicle's rear section, which houses the jet engine, has a metallic framework and panels like an aircraft. The front third of the car, where the driver will sit, is made of carbon fibre and is a single shell or monocoque design, like a Formula One car. It's been built by URT Composites, who work with clients in a number of different industry sectors, including motorsport, where they've established close links with some of Formula One's leading teams. The company's technical director is Kevin Emmett. It's the same sort of technologies, really. Obviously, we're, we're using a composite material that the, the F1 guys use uh, for lightweight and stiffness. Um, and this car needs to be fairly light. It's going to be about seven and a half tons when it's fully, fully fueled. The weight difference for this vehicle in a composite over a metallic version is somewhere in the region of probably 75% lighter. The monocoque is built in two halves, and the joining process involves it being wrapped with a breather material before being vacuum packed in a suitably large plastic bag. It's then baked for several hours in an autoclave, which acts like a giant pressure cooker and seals the join. The record attempt will take place at Hackskeen Pan, a 12 mile stretch of dry lake bed in South Africa's Northern Cape. In order to prepare the track, 16,000 tonnes of stones have had to be removed. And as there's no mechanical way of doing this without damaging the surface, it's all had to be done by hand. To break the land speed record, the car must make two runs in opposite directions, where it's timed over a flying mile. A maximum of one hour is allowed between each run, during which the team have to refuel the jet and the rocket and check the Myriad operating and safety systems. Despite Andy Green's extensive experience, there's no getting away from the inherent dangers. The reason we know this is going to go safely is because we are all asking the what can go wrong and what do we need to do to make sure it doesn't go wrong. And with this car, it is about thousands and thousands of different risk mitigations. It's quality of engineering, it's quality of engineers, it's understanding everything we're doing, it's step-by-step -step testing, this year to 800 miles an hour, next year to 1,000 miles an hour, and uniquely, 
because we now have the capability to stream live video and live data from this car, we share every single one of those experiments with a global audience to bring that technology to life for the next generation. Seven years after its launch, the project is on track to achieve its technological and educational goals. If all goes to plan, Bloodhound will eclipse the current mark later this year, before returning to South Africa in 2016 to break the 1,000 miles per hour barrier. For every single one of us, getting this car to 1,000 miles an hour and sharing the adventure over the next two years with tens of millions of people around the globe is going to be one of the most satisfying things any of us will ever get a chance to do. I'm uniquely privileged not just to have the world's best day job as a Royal Air Force fighter pilot, I get to work with the world's best engineers creating the most sophisticated straight line racing car in history. It doesn't get any better than that, it doesn't get any more exciting than that, and we get to share it with the whole world. We can't wait for the day we can say, we did that, we achieved it. Go forth and engineer things, young people. That's where we're gonna go.